Welcome back to Durban and uh, the province KwaZulu-Natal is going to play host this morning to the opening of uh, what I think is going to be a very, very successful uh, gathering of uh, intellectuals when it comes to water, the most precious resource that we have on this planet and one that sadly so many people do not have. And that's uh, one of the, the goals and challenges, as you all know, of the, uh, the development uh, plans to try and ensure that every single person has access to water, but we're talking people uh, that don't have access to water is almost close on 800 million people around the world. So what can we do to ensure that that situation is made better? Well, this year, the theme is waste water, and it's trying to use waste water adequately to ensure that not a single drop of water is wasted. Well, KwaZulu-Natal, as usual, always seems to be here in uh, the city of Durban, playing host to these major events. Well, I'm joined now by Willis Nkunu, who is the Premier of uh, KwaZulu Natal and uh, joining the premier this morning is Joachim Halem. He, of course, is uh, the vice chair of uh, UN Water. So it's going to be great to have both of them chatting to us about this. Welcome, gentlemen, to Morning Live. Uh, Thank morning. You Thank you. Thank you, Leah. And uh, let's start off with you, Premier, to once again be hosting such a major event in the uh, in the province, in the city. What does it mean to you? Well, well importantly, we, we, we value all of the international events we host, even the country ones. Because they bring tourists, they give our province a big name, they put us on the map of Africa, South Africa and the world. So in that sense, we really do welcome all the UN delegates, uh, including all others who come from various countries. Yeah, indeed, and it's amazing that you find um, it being hosted in a province like KwaZulu-Natal that has been... Um, under restrictions and water restrictions and in a drought for almost, we're moving into four years now, is that correct, Premier? Four years, yeah. yes, we still are under those restrictions. Yeah. You know, our average level is still uh, around, around 13%. Yeah. That's our average level. We are getting rainfalls, but uh, like all of the country, uh, will be maybe many parts of the country, we're still not confident yeah. that it's going to improve. Uh, we're going into winter now. Uh, it is a dry season, as it is known. Yeah. Uh, and in that sense, we really value. We'll value the expertise we'll get from this. We have been invited to our observers as well. Indeed. So as part of it, we should gain a lot, lot more experience. And our MEC for Cocktail is a part of some of the sessions, including chairing one of the sessions. And for us, uh, we really uh, welcome everybody and we're happy. And we hope to gain more experience after they have come and gone. Well, I mean, and that's what it's all about. And let's bring you into the conversation here, uh, Joachim. I mean, being from UN Water mm -hmm. and uh, hearing the experience that Durban is going through, or KwaZulu-Natal, I should say, mm. it, I imagine it speaks to many countries in the world that we're not isolated here. No, absolutely not. I think that we have a, a major water crisis in the world. It's... Um, it's not only about water supply, it's about the water resources, it's about the environment, it's about management, and it's about uh, competing uses of water uh, for agriculture, food production, energy production, uh, for tourism, mining, um, for industry and so forth. And, and um, population growth and consumption is increasing. Uh, and we also see other stresses, you know, with climate change, which is impacting on availability of water and also on the extreme events. So, so I would say water is finite, but the, the, the uses are increasing uh, all over the world. When we talk about UN Water, what is it exactly that you do? Yes. So first of all, UN Water is a, a coordination mechanism because there's no one single UN agency that only works with water. So, so we have uh, 31 um, members. These are different UN agencies uh, ranging from FAO, UNDP, UN Environment and so forth, World Health Organization. Uh, and then we have another 38 international partners or international organizations. So all together we coordinate the work. You know, when we, when we talk about water shortages and uh, water restrictions and mm. things like that, it always seems that the poorest of the poor are the ones to suffer the most. Is that the story here in the province as it well, is, Premier? It is. In fact, if uh, we talk about people who have mo lost uh, livestock, mm. uh, people who have been unable to go into arable land uh, and plow, 
uh, we've lost food production in a big way. And remember, some people don't plow in order to sell. Yeah. They plow in order to eat. And those people have started flocking into urban, into cities, into towns, into all urban areas in, in, in pursuit of what is there that can, they, can make them feed their families. And that's the most devastating. And for commercial uh, farmers as well, uh, those who have game farm have lost thousands and thousands of uh, that, that, that farming. Uh, in that sense, we have been shattered. We have been shattered, and uh, if we can't, if we can't be either lucky to have rain and more rain and more rain, uh, or we can't find better ways of, pro of water provision, then we will be doomed. But I think there has been experiences as well. Uh, you, you know, we've never thought of desalination of water, mm -hmm. but uh, through the National Department of Water Affairs, Today, we have that uh, experience in the province as well, just like all other provinces next to the sea yeah. do have. It, we never knew that, to that what extent we could have water beneath through boreholes. Indeed. And we've gone, we've gone all the way yeah. to find water. Just, just finally, from, from your perspective, I mean, we are listening to exactly what many countries in the world are going right. through. I mean, we're so dependent on rain and we pray right. for this rain and yes. it doesn't come. Right. But the, 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 the ways around it, I mean, talk to us about that, because we're hearing about desalination yes. and other issues, yes, boreholes. Yes, we are. We are. Yes, I would say that, of course, there is physical water scarcity in many parts of the world, but I, I would also say that we can use the water we have much more effectively. Here in South Africa, for example, 37% of the water is unaccounted for. That means that it's lost in the distribution systems. Uh, we are flushing out wastewater, the topic we're talking about now, straight into the environment. We can reduce this waste, we can, re we can reuse this water, recycle and reuse. Uh, there are many ways of harvesting rainwater, making sure that it's stored in the groundwater and tanks and through other systems. So being more efficient with the water we have is one way. Uh, also in uh, sectors that are producing crops, uh, food and meat and so forth. Here again, we can be very much more efficient. We could also change uh, slightly our habits and our consumption patterns, mm -hmm. which would reduce our water footprint. Yeah. So certainly there is physical water stress in many parts of the world, but I think that we, we, we can come a long way by, by being more efficient in the way we're handling and treating water now. Gentlemen, we'll leave it there for this morning, but thank you for talking to us and sharing your knowledge. And uh, Premier, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And once again, good luck to uh, KwaZulu-Natal for playing host to such a major event. Thank you very much, Leah. Yeah, it's an and absolute pleasure. Ladies Mkuno, Thanks. of course, as you know, is the Premier here in KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, Joachim Hallen is uh, the Vice Chair of UN Water. They play a massive and integral role in this particular day, the 22nd of March, International Water Day.